and welcome to today's grade 11 physical science lesson. Today we are carrying on with Newton's laws and we're going to explore Newton's second law further. So as we always do, we start with terminology. So I'm going to put up a few terms for you and we will take it from there. So I want you to have a look. I want you to tell me what the following words or terms mean. Independent variable, directly proportional, and inversely proportional. So I'm going to give you two minutes. I want you to just write down what you think these words mean, or what the terms mean. Ask a friend if you need to. Two minutes starting now. Okay, everybody, so hopefully you've got an answer for me. Let's compare what you've got to what I've got on the board. So let's look. For the first piece of terminology, what does the following word or term mean? Independent variable. So I have here that the independent variable is the variable that the investigator changes. So in other words, you are doing the investigation, you make the change. Okay, so that is the independent variable. Something is going to rely on what you do, what change you make. Okay, then directly proportional. This is a relationship in which the values of dependent variable change in the same ratio as the values of the independent variable changes. Okay, that's a lot to take in, so let me go through it again. I'm going to go through it slowly and underline the important parts. It is a relationship, that's the first thing, in which the values of the dependent variable change in the same ratio, important word that, as the values of the independent variable. Okay, so because we're talking proportion, proportion means that we need to talk about ratio. Okay, I hope you remember that. Make a note of it if you didn't have that in your definition, please. Then inversely proportional. Again, a relationship in which the values of the dependent variable change in an inverse ratio to the values of the independent variable changes. Okay, so slowly, what does it mean? So it's a re relationship, again, involves a dependent variable this time the change is an inverse ratio okay so what does that mean that means as one value increases the other value is going to decrease by the same proportion K 
Okay, remember I said two proportion is important. So as the one increases, the other one is going to decrease in the same ratio or by the same proportion. It's really important that you remember those. So proportion, remember we're talking here about ratio. And then, of course, we talk about the independent variable. Please just make a note. This word, inversely, okay, please use that word. Do not use the word indirectly, okay? Please use the word inversely. And then for the other proportion, it's direct proportion. So now, what does this mean? What does inversely proportional or what does directly proportional mean? What does it mean to us as scientists in the laboratory? Let's have a look. I'll give you an example here. If the independent variable doubles, okay, so doubles, then the dependent variable values will halve. Okay, so remember I said to you, if the one value increases by a certain amount, the other one is going to decrease by the same amount or in proportion or in the same ratio. So this one doubled, the dependent variable halved. Okay, so independent variable, you made the change, you made it double. That means the other variable had to halve. Okay. Dependent variable is directly proportional to reciprocal. Okay, goodness, what does this word mean? Reciprocal means, in math terms, 1 over. So I'm going to say here 1 over x. So my reciprocal is, in mathematical terms, the 1 over. Puts it into the bottom of the fraction. Okay? We've had a lot of words. Can we represent this in another way besides words? And we can. We can use a graph. So if I have that as my set of axes, what I'm going to have as my graph is going to be that for my inverse proportion. Okay? Remember, as the one value has increased by a certain amount, the other value decreases in the same ratio. But just so that you can make sure, I want to compare it to direct. Again, I'm going to give my axes, and my direct is going to go like that. It's going to be a straight line that goes through the origin, and it's going to, again, change in ratio. Okay, so we can represent it in words, we can represent it in diagrams. Let's see what else I've got for you. Something we need to remember. A straight line, like we have in direct proportion, gives you a constant gradient. Okay, so hopefully your brains are going to maths. Maths is important here. Yes, maths is important. We need to understand our graphs for a lot of Newton's work to make sense for us. So if your maths is not so good, I suggest you tune into the maths lessons and ask your maths teacher for a little bit of help in this section. Okay, but back to the science. A constant gradient for a straight line, and it'll pass through the origin. So that's the zero, zero point. Okay? If it's plotted for the reciprocal, I'm going to draw that down here. If it's plotted for the reciprocal, I'm going to have my value, and the 1 over, remember, was reciprocal, and that is going to give me my straight line. Okay, so just to make sure it makes sense, let me label this one as y, and that one as x, okay? So when we're plotting the reciprocal, the 1 over, I get a direct line, y plotted against 1 over x. Okay, so just have a look at the three different graphs. I'm going to put all three of them up. Just to make sure that you've got this right in your head, what an inverse or a hyperbola looks like. So that'll be for my inverse relationship over here. When I have a directly proportional relationship, it's a straight line. But remember, the change is in ratio. And then when I have this graph, 
my inverse and I want to convert it to a straight line graph, what am I going to do? I'm going to use the reciprocal, 1 over. Okay? And I will end up with a straight line that goes through the origin, but the difference here is that we've used the reciprocal. Okay, hopefully everybody's tracking with me. Let's carry on. Acceleration. So why am I asking you to just think about acceleration? From last lesson, you'll remember that I told you that Newton's second law is represented by F net equals mass times acceleration. So we need to understand what acceleration is. So thinking back to your kinematics or thinking back to your equations of motion, you should remember that acceleration is equal to your change in velocity over your change in time. Okay? Acceleration is a vector quantity. That means we're going to need direction. And just to help you remember that acceleration is meters per second per second, I'm going to put the units in. What are the units for velocity? The units for velocity are meters per second. And the units for time are second. And because the seconds are at the bottom of this fraction, we're going to end up with meters per second per second. I'm getting too excited here and I'm writing the wrong numbers. Meters per second per second, which gives us meters per second squared. Okay, it should be meters per second per second. We get a little bit lazy and say meters per second squared. Right, now you know where acceleration comes from. You're going to need it a little bit later in your syllabus when we talk about momentum. But for now, let's apply it to Newton's second law. And just to remind you what Newton's second law says says the following. The acceleration of an object, so you see there's our acceleration, is in the direction of the resultant force. Remember it's a vector quantity, that's why we need direction. So acceleration of an object is in the direction of the resultant force acting on the object. So the acceleration is directly proportional to the resultant force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Now you can see why I gave you those terms, why we need to know this terminology. We need to understand directly proportional. We need to understand inversely proportional so that when we have Newton 2 problems, or we have questions involving Newton 2, we're able to explain them mathematically using graphs, using numbers, and we can also explain them using words. Okay, so those three things, that's why we need to know what these words mean. Let's just quickly revise what the equation is. For second law, Newton's second law, F net equals mass times acceleration. And because one is directly proportional and the other is inversely proportional, we can represent it on the graph. So we've said F net is directly proportional to A. So force is directly proportional to acceleration. So if I draw this in here, I can draw that graph. I just make sure that it's in the right place through the origin. Right. So my F net, so here my force is directly proportional. So force directly Proportional. That's what this graph means. To acceleration. Okay. If we move on, what is the relationship between acceleration and mass? Here, our relationship is an inverse or a hyperbola. So acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. So this is our hyperbola and this is an inverse proportion. Okay, so as one goes up by a certain amount, the other one's going to go down by the same proportion or ratio. 
okay? Finally, if I take this graph and I do the reciprocal, so if I take the, that graph and I now want to use the reciprocal, I'm going to end up with a straight line again. Okay? But the important part here is the reciprocal. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a break. We're going to go to an ad break. You are going to just give yourselves a little bit of a brain break. Just get up, stretch if you need to. We've gone through a lot of terminology, a lot of theory. I'll see you after the break. <laughs>